Hello everyone, it's a humid night in Istanbul and I'm recording this new episode from my balcony. If you've been following my development on social media recently, you realize that I conducted a poll about whether I should continue these podcasts on YouTube or move to a dedicated podcast platform such as SoundCloud or something, I don't know. And a slight majority of you voted stay on YouTube. So here I am staying on YouTube. But I've implemented some decisions on uh, how I produce these things. Okay, so before I used to have this big ass mic which records very good high quality audio. Then I would record it on my laptop and then using... Apple's iMovie program edit out a movie in which the background is a single static image and then render that thing and share it and upload it and it would just take up so much time you know and even though I I don't waste any time editing because almost all of these podcasts they are like off the cuff you know spur of the moment bish bash bosh I just talk but Even then, just editing that sound file into a video and, you know, having this background image and then rendering it out and then, you know, a 55 megabyte sound file becomes a gigabyte long movie file for no reason. So that was the reason I wanted to move to SoundCloud. But you guys voted almost by a majority to keep me on YouTube. So here I am staying on YouTube. And I'll be trying to upload this podcast with the one of these new services that allow you to just give them an image and an audio file. And then it makes a video just for you and it saves you a lot of hassle. So let's see how that works out. Maybe there are some, you know, crap on the way and the production may be botched. So apologies in advance. But I guess everything is okay now. So, the subject of this particular podcast is the ethics of killing invasive organisms. Okay, you know, a lot of discussions have been going on recently. If you're in Australia and you come across a cane toad, what would you do? Do you kill it? Or if you're in Australia and you see a feral cat? Or if you're in Florida... And you come across a chameleon or a green iguana. And if you don't know, Florida is like this really bizarre uh, fortnight of reptiles now. Because everybody there keeps exotic pets and everybody releases them to the wild. So you got like weird reptiles from all over the world. Cobras, boa constrictors, ball pythons, rock pythons, tegus chameleons green iguanas all of these animals are not native to that area and they're living and breeding in florida and so the question is if you see a frog in australia or a chameleon in florida what do you do do you kill it now i've always likened this to if you watched the original blade runner 1982 there's this test designed to elicit a sanguine response from the participant so they ask a lot of visceral questions involving the deaths of animals and one of these tests in Blade Runner goes like there's a wasp in your arm do you kill it or like there's a turtle it's turned upside down in the desert sun it will die unless you help it what do you do you know questions like that so I always liken these invasive animal questions to this Blade Runner Ward Kampf test there's you're in Florida there's a chameleon you know it's invasive it's looking at you with your with its beady eyes what do you do or like you're in Australia you see a frog it's harmless it's never done anything to you but you know that if you let it go it's gonna eat like two native geckos and one native rare butterfly what you gonna do? The stick is in your hands. Do you hit it or do you go? Now, in all of these questions, my response has been 
an unconventional one. Maybe you will disagree with me, and if you disagree, let's talk about this on the comments because you know I'm always here to start a constructive debate, and I'm never here to bash other opinions. But in my opinion, especially in places like Australia, I mean the ball is too far out the court already. You know, if if you kill one frog or ten cats, you're not gonna make a dent. If you spend all of your life killing these invasive, supposedly invasive animals, you're not even going to make a dent in their population. If everybody in Australia did their damnedest best, they still wouldn't make an impact. I think the only cases where eradication works is for animals that are as big as or larger than humans. So we know that eradication worked for runaway reindeer or I might be mistaken it's either reindeer or caribou in Australia or I don't know goats some animals bigger than people or of equal size basically now those animals you can find easily you can just shoot them from a distance it's more efficient but if you're looking at things like cane toads or cats one of them is always gonna get away and it's not gonna matter if you spend your whole life killing them and then there's the ethics of it too I mean you could say that the Australian cat or the Australian cane, cane toad is well on its way to becoming a different subspecies of its own and you know is it really ethical to take so many lives and then you get into all these weird discussions about like is the life of one rare gecko more valuable than that of the toad in my opinion yes so if you yeah if you see a like cane toad about to eat a rare animal yeah maybe take it out but you know it's still a bit of an icky question oh by the way i just remembered an exception to that rule i just discussed if I'm not mistaken, in Australia there was a successful eradication campaign on rabbits with tailor-made viruses and stuff. It didn't extinguish them, but it decreased their population a lot. So there you go. Maybe you need to actively manage these things. And 100% extinction is, in almost all cases, not an option. I believe only in a few islands of New Zealand did they manage to fully eradicate rats and that took them years you know so it's a difficult choice same situation with Florida I mean for me it's far more interesting to see how that great battle royale that great fortnite of reptiles is gonna play out and I'm sorry but you know down there you're not gonna save anything and by killing others you have to let nature take its course and in 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 the long run it's going to be more interesting to see all those crafty ways these animals survive change and adapt too i mean don't think these animals are like cast in stone you know in a hundred thousand years there's going to be a separate species of florida chameleon maybe even less five thousand years in a few thousands of tens of thousands of years there's going to be a distinctly Australian species of cat. Hell, it even happened with the dingo. It was just a regular doggy dog. And then it became a indigenous Australian subspecies, if not species. Of course, I would have liked, you know, that these faunal crossovers never took place. You know, I would have liked to see Australia or Florida or New Zealand or Hawaii, you know, remain pure and uninvaded, uninvaded by man much more I mean that would have been my preference but we're not living in that universe right now and you know it's it's really weird like would you take so many lives because of ethics I mean those animals didn't do nothing bad they were born there I mean with Australian feral cats I can understand the need for extermination but I don't know maybe I'm too squeamish or maybe I don't know wow it's definitely far more relaxing to podcast this way just speaking into a little recorder 
and I can talk more freely with a more conversational tone of voice and anyways I enjoyed recording my thoughts and let's not get too muddled up but what do you think about the eradication versus ethics debate you know just comment and like and share this video and I'll be in conversation heck it would be so interesting like imagine if an unknown alien came you just happen to be in a forest with your girlfriend or your kids and the alien shot you all why because he believes that humanity originated in Africa <laughs> so this species must remain in Africa so the alien is killing all humans it finds in places that are not Africa you know from uh, the victim's point of view I guess that's not an ethical thing to do is it and life has always gone through these faunal crossovers heck even without any need for people okay let's go back millions of years South and North America were separate continents, okay? And South America had its own unique set of animals. It had terror birds, glyptodonts, giant ground slots, a heck of other things like, maybe I'm mistaken, but toxodonts or uh, some weird ungulate-like animals that people still aren't clear if they were like a different grade of placental mammals or just... You know, so it had all these weird animals. Then North America and South America made contact, and this great faunal exchange took place. And a lot of animals, a lot of these weird animals in South America, became extinct without the need for man. You know, nature did the introduction and the invasion by itself. Now there was no ethics to speak of there. If, if you landed with a time machine to the time of this great faunal interchange, would you go about killing North American animals in South America just to keep the terror birds or, you know, then this ethics issue becomes even more irrelevant. So anyways, these were my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Let's talk in the comments and as always, have a nice day. Goodbye.